Luke 15, Luke 15, verse 13 to 32. I don't know whether I will read all those verses, I may look at Luke, but uh, the text is Luke chapter 15, verse number 13 to verse number 32. Thank you, Lord God. Luke chapter 15, from verse, actually from verse number 11, from verse number 11, not verse 13, from verse number 11. Bible says, Luke chapter 15, yeah. then he said, a certain man and two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that he forced to me. He divided to them his life freehold. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with the prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would grandly have filled his stomach with the pounds that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's iron servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with anger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your iron servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and, and compassion and lean and fell on his neck and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and the sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry now his older son was in the field and he came and drew near to the house. He had hand music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what was these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and because he has, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fattened calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to him, Father, Lord, these many years I have been serving you, I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never give me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as his son, uh, the son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with the arrows? You killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. I want to talk to us by the grace of God on a topic I'm calling Serving God as a Son. Last week, but one, we were talking on the issues of a child of God. And uh, last week, last Sunday, we deviated a little bit 
and they spoke about you know uh, 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 there is hope and now I feel like going back to that topic serving God as a son serving God as a son mambo mengi yamekuwa yakiingia in my heart about who we are to God and how we relate with God the other time we saw in the scripture the bible asked what a manner of love is this that the father has loved us with that we be called we should be called the children of God ni upendo wa aina gani you can you, you you tend to think about it think about our nature watu hawanjasoma vile watu ambao hawanjatoka familia very important hata kama wengine wametoka important we have our own shortcomings we have done things that are not accept, um, acceptable we have done things our fathers our parents have done things that are not right before god but the lord is but god decided to send his own and only son to die so that his blood may wash you the blood of his own pleasure son may wash you ikuoshe so that you may be qualified to be called a child of god as the bible says in john 3 verse number 16 that for god so loved the world and gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but should have eternal life that god because of love that he has loved you he loved you so much than deciding to give a gift which is a gift of his son his only son and select them the son to be killed to die a terrible death ili damu yake imwagike ikuoshe inioshe ituoshe ili ya kwamba akikuangalia wewe asione makosa yako anaona damu ya mtoto wake akikuangalia wewe asione ukabila wako ukoo wako akikuangalia wewe asione your generations your genealogy your grandfathers anakuangalia anaona damu ya mtoto wake na anasema this is my son kwa sababu ya hiyo damu ambayo imekuosha ambayo ukuosha every day ya kwamba unaweza kusimama mbele zake kwa sababu ya damu because of the blood you are able to stand in the presence of god because of the blood you are qualified to be called a son of god you don't have any natural qualification to be called a child of god actually if people wangeangalia was scrutinize maisha yako many will say this one does not even qualify kama ingekuwa ni mwanadamu anasimama to choose maybe wewe aungechaguliwa because mwanadamu angeangalia aone you have nothing to offer you have nothing to offer you have nothing to give you are not special you are not even from a known family there is nothing good about you there is nothing anaweza benefit kwako but god is different he looked at you and he loved you we learned in the bible when we were starting Jesus said you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you see wewe ulinichagua that the lord says the reason as to why you are here it is not even because you love me so much i know you are shortcomings najua asira zako najua siri dhambi zako za siri najua matendo yako yaliyo yasiyokubalika najua mambo ambayo yako in your heart ambayo hayafai but i have chosen you and i have appointed you that you are so special to him that he looked at you and he said i will choose this one and because of the blood now you are here in the book of john chapter number 1 we also saw the other day ya kwamba wale ambao walimkubali alikuja kwa watu wake 
na watu wake hawakumtambua he came to his own people but his own people did not receive him but as many as received him kwa wale ambao walimkubali he gave them the right to be called the children of god and i like i said the other day I pray that in your other shall be an assurance that you are a child of God. If you have come to him, you have surrendered your life to him and you have invited him into your life. Don't, it's not about the money you have. You know, when Adam we let people based on what the car they came driving, based on where they live, based on the kind of dress they have, based on their education. But God is so different and is so special. He says, once you have come, na umenikubari kwa moyo wako, you have the certificate to become a child of God. That now you are a son of God. You are a child of God. And it doesn't matter how you feel. I'm remembering the words of Jesus. Wakati shetani alikuja, I think I quoted him the other day. Shetani came and he had come to test him. After Jesus understood angry for 40 days and 40 nights when he was led in the wilderness to pray after the moment of fasting Jesus did not have something to eat I want you to hear this child of God after the moment of prayer and the fasting Jesus did not have something to eat So sometimes you know you may serve the Lord you may even pray now go do ya kwamba things asijaigiana you don't have something to eat. You have not gotten the change you want yet. You have not gotten the breakthrough you want yet. And at that point, the devil comes to test you. The devil comes to try you. Yes, you know you have served God well. You have walked with God well. Jesus was even in the wilderness, was praying. He was fasting. But Satan came and said, if you are the child of God, if you are a son of God, change this. Stones to be bread that you may eat. So what I'm trying to say is this. Sometimes you know. Your thoughts may, thoughts may arise in you. Mawazo ya naweza inuka dani yako. Mawazo ambayo ya kona seta, eh, na sauti ya shetani. Ambayo na kuambia. Kama ukona mungu. Na kama wea ni mtoto wa mungu. Why are you suffering like this? Kama wea ni mtoto wa mungu. Kwa nini minangu wa funguka? Kama we ni mtoto wa mungu. Kanini hauja inuriwa kama wengine. And sometimes people are lost at the point and you feel like you are less of a, of a child of God. And that's what I usually say. I don't like when people come with a competition of grace. Hey, huyu le akona neema sana. Huyu akona neema sana. Grace is not for competition. And I want you to know that it is not about what you have. It's not about your car. It's not about your money. It's not about your job. The Lord has chosen you that you may become a son. Can you say amen? Therefore, it's, you may not be where you desire to be, but you are a child of God. You may not have what you want to have, but you are a child of God. And may you not forget that when Jesus turned to Satan, he said, It is written, Man shall not live by blood alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. What Jesus was telling Satan, I don't have to defend my sonship. I know I am a son. Praise the name of the living God. Whether I have eaten or I have not eaten, I know my position in God. Whether I have money or I don't have money, I know my position in God. What if I did a son is not what they have, it is their identity. What if I did a son is their DNA, if I may put it that way. What makes you a son to your father is your DNA. What makes you a son to your father is not the kind of your undress. It's not your height. It's not your money. It's your DNA. And how many know that by the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ, we were transformed. First, we were bought from our natural families. Tuli nunuriwa. Nandeni yetu ya dhambi ikaripoa. 
and you have been now transformed and brought into the family of God and you have become a child of God. Praise the Lord. From the scripture that we have learned, Bible Jesus gives us a story and he says, a certain man and the two sons. I want you to look at this. There was a certain man who and the two sons. This is a story that is being given by Jesus. And I've been trying to think about the teachings that Jesus himself taught. And this is a story I would love you to look at because it is a very special thing that is in it for us. So Jesus says there was a certain man who and the two sons. And one day the younger one saying to the father, Father, I want you to give me the share of my property. I want to live my own life. One of the things that you discover from this scripture is that this father was not a poor father. This father and owned certain things. This father was well to do. This father and means. And the son, the younger son felt, now I want to live my life. And he said to him, give me my share. And the father, Bible says, divided them. And na kachukua what he had and gave to the younger son. What does the Bible say? And they came and the younger son took all what was given him by the father. And he went afar to a far off country. Bible says he spent a katumia everything that he ate with the prodigal living. Maisha yala. Akaishi maisha ambayo aina instruction from the father. He left the ways and the, 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 the standards of their family and went to live a different life. I want you to know, to, to see what happened. Bible says that some time later, after he journeyed of a country, he wasted his possessions with the prodigal living. He wasted his possessions. possessions. The father gave him yes. But he left the father's family. The father gave him yes. But he left the father's house. The father gave him yes. But he left the father's instructions. The father's standards. He felt I want to live my own way of life. Before I move on, I want to say this. This, as I was reading this scripture last night, it gave me an answer to a question I've been asking myself. Have you ever discovered kuna watu who get to a church, get connected to the pastor, and they start doing well, and at some point, for whatever reason, they leave, and when they have left, maisha yao inaanzia kuaribika. Have you ever noted that? And I was asking myself, what happens? Why does it happen this way? I have seen it happen in my own ministry. I can tell you, I don't cast people, whether in private or in public. But I have seen it happening. And this is what I have discovered. Father wound is a grace that comes from the Lord. And it is God who places people to each family. And in every family, Kunan grace and bio ikoapa for the ikoapa I mean for people who are supposed to be in this family. This is a family where God Himself is the Father, but because He cannot be here physically, He has brought a representative in the name of the Apostle, and I am here representing Him. And so there are people, different people who have come. And I have seen doors open for people. I have seen God left people. And sometimes things happen. And for whatever reason, people go. And not only in this church, it happens everywhere. And you discover later, Maisha ya mtu ya meanzia kuenda vibaya. And you ask yourself, why does it happen like this? It is because there is something that happens when you are in your family. There is something that happens when you are in the place where God has planted you. I remember sometimes back I said, church, 
You don't choose a church. You don't choose a father. God gives you a father. God gives you a spiritual father. And when you discover that this person is my father, stick. Have you ever tried this? You go to different churches, some of them which are very good. They can have everything, very good worship, very good buildings. Lakini unanjaribu kufetu unaskia, you don't belong there. Have you ever felt like that? You go to this man, he is very good, he is very anointed. Everything is okay about him. And, but you try to connect with him. Unaskia, no, there is no connection. It is because these things are divinely ordered. Divinely ordered. And the moment you get out of the grace of the family, you discover there is something you lose. That is why I'll talk again about the, the, the son. He was given by the father everything and he went away. And I'm sure when he was going away, he was saying like this, my own brother is a fool. Yeah, I'm a back I look at what happens wakati watu wanama kanisa. Wana upigi yananga simu. I know you know what happens. At wewe bando uko kwa hiyo kanisa. Bando muko na huyo pastor. That's the language. And 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 the people say me eh hey, mimi niliangalia nikaona there is no growth. But you discover within no time people who felt there is no growth, there is no grace, there is nothing. By and by they start dying. They start going down. Wananzia kusahaulika. People who are starting to shine, there are things that start going wrong. Why? It is because there is a revelation they never got. They thought it is because they are under a calf. I've had people who have, who have said this, uh, Apostle Roy, iwe or no, sisi ndiyo tulikuwa tumemushikiria. But I usually tell people this, a father is the one who gives grace to succeed. When you remove yourself, you may look as though you have weakened him, but he will blossom because the same grace is still there. Praise the name of the living God. But that's not the message. The prodigal son left the family. He went away and started having a prodigal life. And he wasted everything. One of the things I want you to know very well, him and the younger and the older brother, they enjoyed the same privileges. They enjoyed the same grace. But him, at some point, something came into, my, into his mind and he felt, I, I can do better if I am away out of this house. That is what helped him. That is what I mean, made him move away. He felt, I can live a better life. I will have freedom. Hapa mzee, anatukazianga sana. Na ezaishu maisha mazuri. We can look at, looking in the context of a church, he said, I think, ale apa, neno inakuanga boring, kuna mari, kuna neno, ikona vibe. And so, he left. And within no time, life started getting back. He lost everything. And not only he lost everything, got to a point whereby he had no even food to eat. And he got employed by a pig keeper. A cow, shamba boy. You know, sometimes back I, and, I have my brother and my cousin. And this cousin of ours came and looked at our family akaona Hii familia kuligana na relationship ilikuwa na my uncles and the like. Spoke with my brother kamuambia. Unajua, hapa sioni kama mutawa itoboa. Na hata kusoma amuta soma. Wewe fanya hivi, nitakutafutia kibalua. Nitakutafutia kibalua, uenda ufanya uwazia kujipanga mapema. My brother akiwa from oze two or three, akatoka shule, akenda akanjiriwa kuchunga ngombe. Kwa sababu gani? Kumetokea a voice na muambia, sioni kama mutatoboa. Thank God mungu wali musaidia, akanjirudia, akarundi nyumbani. And you know, there are always many voices. That when you're in your father's family, the family of our God, 
that will come and tell you you can do better ukinjiachilia cha sana unajikazianga sana but i want you to look at now the other way out the older son was left at home serving the father the older son did not ask for anything he kept on serving i was trying to ask myself what are the lessons that jesus wanted to teach us and one of the things i got is this you can be a son but have the mindset of a servant you can be a son but not belong you can be a son and have the wrong attitude and we are many sons of god but there are some which have we who have the right attitude and some have the wrong attitude this younger son was a good son but and the mentality of a servant hakujikubali kama mwana hakuwa na mindset ya a son he always felt he can do better if he was not in this family and what messed up with his life what could have destroyed his uh, his destiny he is living a life away from the instructions of the father living a life away from the word of the father living a life away from the living standards of the father in our family the family of our god we have our standards we have the one that is given to us and that word we will deliver us safe that word we will deliver us in victory the love that god loves you with i want you to hear this the love that god loves you with is so powerful that that love will deliver you safe i want to say that one again the love of our god is so powerful that will deliver you safe it will save you from any trouble the love of god for you will save you from danger the love of god for you not the love you love him with the love he loves you with will ensure that your life is well taken care of never look at where you are and concentrate at the challenges way of where you are but know this god loves you so much that he, he also gave a son to die because of you and the bible asks in the book of act the one who gave is it at solomon the one who gave a son to die for you how will he not together with him give you all things if you only give a son i don't think there is anybody i can give my son i don't think there is anybody you can give a child you discover even when you're your child is getting married those who have children who have gotten married to release your daughter mama faith i am sure kulikuwa na mawazo mengi sana i remember ukiniambia eh, man of god wacha tuombe kwa sababu unashindwa yes huyu amutoi kama dhabiu anaolewa na yule anamuoa pia atakuwa mtoto wako lakini ndani yako unashindwa we of this one take care of my daughter we of this one take care of my son you are not so sure the first one here unaona simu kwanza bandara ya kuwa excited unakuwa alert usikie anataka kukuambia nini anataka kukuambia kuko sawa ama hakuko sawa but i want you to look at god he is not like that he has given a son not asking for a dowry not asking for a payment not asking for a reward he has given a son to die and to die a painful death even through the shedding of his blood because of you because of me what a good reward what a sacrifice what a show of love and sometimes you disqualify yourself you feel like you're not loved but god loves you so much god cares about you so much 
God thinks about you so highly that I wish you can know what he has for you. Bible says what he has for you no eye has seen. No, you know, it has not come to the imagination of any man. I want you to know it doesn't matter how things are right now. What God has for you. What the Lord has in store for you. Aijaonekana na macho ya mwanandamu. Haijaingia kwa imagination yako. God loves you. He cares for you. And that is why this day I have come to say this. In the early issues of serving God, we would rather become sons instead of becoming servants. I heard the Lord ask me the other day, you want to serve me as a son or as a servant? And I asked the Lord God, what is the difference? And the spirit of the Lord started showing me a couple of things. It's prestigious to become, to be called a servant of God. But I said, God, I want to become your son. Why? A son serves for inheritance, but a servant serves serves for a salary. A son serves for inheritance, but a servant serves for a salary. A servant has a day to live. A son is there permanently. A son never leaves. A son never leaves. A servant gets only a reward, a payment of what he has done. But for a son, all what the father has belongs to him. And that is why I want to show you the difference that Jesus was showing us. If you look at the difference between the older son and the younger son, the younger son, mind yake aikuwa na legitimacy, alifikiria like a servant. Alifikiria like somebody day who is not there permanently. Alifikiria kwa njia ya mshahara. He never allowed himself to settle in his father's home. And so what happened? Every time, every day I imagine he was waking up. Ananzia kufikiria. Kama ningekua siko in this family, maisha yangu yangekua mbeta. Kama mimi ningepata vitu zangu niende nikafanya biyashara ninaweza faulu. And he, has, he had all manner of things. And you know this is what happens. When we come to the house of the Lord and many, God starts giving them a little of things. They start feeling. If I, if nikitoka kwa, kwa hii kanisa hiko na mashalti mingi, nienda kwa kanisa hii na mashalti, ninaeza maishi maisha yangu na freedom. Kwa sababu sasa niko na mari. Naweza fanya biyashala za inayote. Because sometimes we are, we are tend to have this mentality ya kudanganyika. Ya kwamba God anakuzuhiria have you ever felt like that ay hey, kama haungekuwa kwa mungu labda maisha ingekuwa better you know the devil is a liar the devil is a liar and he lied to this young man until he was convinced akasikia ni kama maisha yake yanaweza kuwa better if he was away from the father akasikia ni kama maisha yake ingekuwa better akipatua vitu zake yaende but this day I have come to say to all of us, may you learn to serve like a son. May you accept to serve as a son. And you know, like I've said, everything, look at what the Bible shows us. Let me finish the story so that we are able to, un to, to, to understand well. When the son, the younger son, after finishing everything that he earned with the prodigal life, akakula laza kena uko, akamis manage whatever he was having. Why did he mismanage? He had no grace. I, I am remembering, before we move on, I am mean, remembering Abraham and Lot. You know the story of Abraham and Lot? Who was Lot to Abraham? A nephew, all right? They left. The, uh, uh, Abraham loved Lord. Na alienda na yeye wakati aliambiwa aondoke kwao. 
Lord because of the grace that was upon Abraham maisha yake yakaanzia kuendelea akaanzia kuonawili but there is a time that came i want you to look at this abraham a lot akaanzia kusikia si mimi niko hata mimi niko na sons hata mimi niko na servants hata mimi niko na mifugo akaanzia kubishana na na, na the hanko Aka, wakaanzia kusumbuana at one day abraham akaambia lord it is not okay for us to keep fighting nataka uchague pande ile ungependa kuenda nataka tuachane ukichagua north nitaenda south ukichagua kwa milima nitaenda kwa mabonde ukichamua kwa mabonde nitaenda kwa milima make a choice and the bible shows lot alichagua the best place the plains of uh, of um, of, uh, of canaan and the places that he chose is where sodom was na kaenda na huko akaona sasa hata kwa mbele ya mjomba wake he felt okay but there came a, came a time when there was trouble that came even upon his life it took abraham to go kasato paraza to go and look for lot ili amsaindie you know i had the lord say something to me this is not for you it's for me that i should know the lots that i need to look for i don't know what that one means that abraham and now to go again akatabut akatafute lot na atafute njia hata ya kumtetea before god anauliza mungu mungu ninakuuliza kama ungepata fifth elisha's men who do you save sodom akateremsha mpaka akafika tano kwa sababu Abraham wanted to do everything to save this young man because the young man later previously alifikiria maisha inaendelea hivyo tu he can manage but when he left things he started going wrong i am coming back to the story when the young man bible says when he came back to his senses verse number verse number 16 look at verse number 16 he and he und grandre a filled his stomach with the pons that's why he hit bra verse 17 but when he came to himself he said how many of my fathers i and the servants i want you to look at this look at that one in in niv look at that one in niv i want you to look at it Let, let's look at this Can we learn this one together? One, two, three. When he came to his senses, he said, "How many of my father's iron men are found to spare, and here I am starving to death?" When he came back to his senses, one of the worst attacks is the attack of your senses. The attack of your senses is one of the worst attacks and I want you to know this it doesn't matter who you are you need to be careful to protect your senses kwa sababu mawazo yako yakiwa under attack you always think the opposite of the way things are supposed to be mawazo yako yakiwa under attack you make wrong decisions mawazo yako yakiwa under attack you destroy what you're supposed to build mawazo yako yakiwa under attack you act in foolishness all the time and this is what happened to this young man when he was making a decision to leave his father a sensual under attack he made a decision out of his senses the bad part is this When you allow your senses to be under attack the decision you make the consequences you not avoid the consequences will come that is why it is very important not to allow the mind of the flesh to guide you when making decisions mawazo ya kimwanadamu they may sound nice they may sound to have a lot of wisdom They may sound to be very convincing but it's always going to ask yourself if if Jesus came here is this one it what you need to tell me to do 
This is something of late I've been asking myself. If the Lord came, is this what he would tell me to do? And there are times I've found the Lord tell me in this, keep quiet. In this, take your time. In this, and God can guide you. And I pray for all of you. Because when, especially when things are not okay, it is very easy to have wrong judgments. When probably you are under pressure, it is very easy to make long judgments, long conclusions. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your senses will be protected. You will always be sober. You will always have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That is why Jesus said, I will not leave you like orphans, but I will send you a nail pad. I will send you someone who will help you. He will come and be with you all the time. That is why, I imagine that is why the Lord God decided that the Holy Spirit will be in you. So that as you think, as you imagine, as you reason, he will be there to help you. He will be there to remind you that's not the way to go. What does the Bible say? When you go to the close loans, you will hear a voice telling you, here is the way. Follow in it. A little small voice. Sometimes we ignore that voice. We don't follow that voice. The little small voice that tells you. Yes that thing you want to do is good and is popular. But avoid it. That decision sounds good. But it is not good for you. Brothers and sisters. You can serve God as a son. You can live in the, in the house. In the family of God as a son. Where you are not in competition with anybody. You know that you belong to God. You know that you are a child of God. You know that you are a son of God. You know that you, are, you belong. You know that God has called you and has chosen you. It doesn't matter the challenge. And I pray for everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. That no matter what happens. Don't lose the position of a son. This man when his senses were attacked, he lost the position of a son. Yes, I want you to know that even when he was away, he was still a son, but did not have the protection of the family. He was still a son, but did not have the grace the family possesses. He was still a son, but the privileges of a son, he could not enjoy them. Because he was not within the remits of the family. Sometimes uh, pressure can come until it pushes you away from God. Never forget you are, a son of, you, are a, you are a son of God. Whether in the valley, always remember you are a son of God. Whether under fire, always remember you are a son of God. The wilderness that may be there is not permanent. The challenges that may be there... They are not permanent. Kenya at a time like this when things are not good economically in our nation. We always remember that there is God and we should always remain within the parameters of God. And ask yourself, where is God in this? Where is God in this? Mungu wa koapi. Let me tell you brothers and sisters, it is not about another anointed man. It is not about another family. It is not about another church. It's the most important thing is this. You maintain your intimacy with God. You maintain your intimacy with God. Listen, it's not about what is popular. I, I am sure if it was our day, the Gen C prodigal son, Kayada. He was a Gen C. He would have sounded, have sounded very wise. He would have been celebrated. All oh, girls allowed him. Other young men allowed him. With this nice car, they are parking it beside the laundry somewhere. And they are enjoying their life. It looked good. And it would look good even now. Living a life away from your father. Living a life away from God. Let me tell you. It doesn't matter the reasons. Listen to me. Before we continue, I want to say this. A father is not a perfect man. 
A father is not necessarily a perfect man. What am I trying to say? Yes, God is perfect in all his ways. Are you hearing me? God is perfect in all his ways. Lakini ukimwangalia, utamuona makosa mingi sana. Ukimwangalia vile ameku, ame, ame, amekua anakaa na wewe, utamuona ma, makosa mingi sana. Wewe umewahi ona, umewahi angalia utoe Mungu makosa. I don't know whether you are like me. The things sound look at it namwambia Mungu hapa hapa ni kama Mungu hapa unjatumia akili. <laughs> Are you you know you know you look at God sometimes and you unaangalia unaona Mungu hapa is like hapa God you are not serious. Hapa God ni kama uko na mchezo. There are things you look at and think I'm sure for the prod, for the young man to leave his father's family aliangalia kaona Baba, dadi, mzee, we hapa utumia akili. Mimi nikipata hizi vitu zangu, I will live a very good life. Nitakuwa sawa. When I was starting ministry, I was a fiery preacher. Fiery preacher. Ndukuru saints na zinabeba watu. And I thought nina answer ministry within miezi sita I'll be having 500 members. I was feeling like in two, three months, in two, three years, I'll be having a following of 5,000 people. And I would feel those who are there, they don't know what they are doing. But when you get into it, you discover that's not how things happen. I want to say this. Sometimes, mawazo inaiza danganya mtu. You are senses. Especially when your mind is under attack. You can, you can be daganyikant and make wrong decisions. I pray for you in Jesus name. You don't make wrong decisions. Protect your family. Protect your life. Protect your heart. Protect your children. Know there is a tomorrow. Life is not ending today. Don't make wrong decisions because of the pressure of today. Don't make wrong decisions because of the pain of today. The voices that may be there speaking to you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, they will not divert you. I want to tell you the truth. Many a times, the far I have come, I have made a mistake that I, look, I can look back to and say, here I made a mistake because I listened to the wrong voice. Here I made a mistake because I allowed human senses to guide me i pray in the name of jesus christ you will always make right decisions look at this young man when he came back to his senses he said how many of my father's iron servants who are food enough to eat na yakubakisha wakati niko hapa nikikula na ngurue i want you to look at this he is thinking like a servant. Why would he not have asked himself? My brother is at home eating and enjoying. Wakati niko hapa. Nikikula na ngurue. Lakini aliangalia kaji compare na servants. And at this time he has been induced even below the, worst, the lowest of the servants. Because of the choices he made. And he said, I will go back to my father. It's time to make strong decisions and say, I will go back to God strongly. I will go back to serving the Lord strongly. I will go back to loving God strongly. I have, will go back to fellowship with God strongly. He said, I will go back to my father and say to him, I am not even worthy to be called your servant. Look at the way he has reduced himself. What I like about him is the remorse. The remorse that was in him. He will send, I will say, I have sinned against God and I have sinned against you. And I am not worthy to be called even your servant. I like the brokenness. Because most of the times we are so proud, we are so arrogant, we want to go back feeling big. We don't want to lose the position. We want to go back to the position we used to have. But that humility 
of approaching our Father God. That you merit of acknowledging who he is. But now, lashing because of time, he said, I'll go back to the mother. I will, said, verse number 19. Verse number 19, he says, And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. I pray for you today that you never desired to be like a hired servant to God. Listen, this is what is carrying us in our nation. Because Kenya, Kenya, both the preachers and those who minister on the altar, we have become so servant-minded that always we think about a salary. For somebody to sing in the church, they want to ask themselves, how much money will I get? For somebody to preach in a certain church, you are invited to preach. You want to ask, how much money will I get first? How will I be treated? Those days, people have managers. They want to say, I'll talk. I'll give you my manager. For somebody, that is why churches today, they have equipment and they have no play. People to play the equipment. Why? Because people are saying, I want you to know. I want to know. Nita patanga pikwanza before ni chese kimbundi. Nita patanga pikwanza before ni play guitar. Nita chese patanga. And this one is the spirit that is sending our people to plant their life. Is the spirit that is destroying the future. Is the spirit that is destroying the destiny. We are God has come, has blessed you, and has anointed you, has given you a gift. Then you come before him and you tell him, God, me, I cannot serve you before I know. I pray that in World Changes Church, that spirit will not be, never be there. Praise the name of the living God. It may sound popular when we are saying how much will I get. It is how it may sound popular when we are saying wachungaji repen what. It is sounds popular. Actually, kifika kwa social media ina shambeki sana. But we need to ask ourselves where is the spirit of sonship? We are the servants of God. We are the worshippers of God. There are people who will come out believing I am going to serve the Lord with all of my heart because I am a son. The people will not come and say I not need a pain. God, I need a pain before I serve. We are the pastors who will pray for people without the first to say you, you have cancer. The, 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 the sacrifice for cancer is 500,000. Brought, uh, you know, as a, a servant mentality, everybody thinking about how they will gain. We are the men and the women of God who will go and pray for a sick person without asking for anything. Later, if these people God touches them, they will be filled with the spirit of thanksgiving and they may come back to honor the Lord with their substance. But we need to get to the point whereby the first thing that comes to your mind is not a reward. When you have the right spirit, I want to say this, when you have the spirit of sonship, even in the church, you will not say, I can't go to church because I have no money. God has not visited me. God has not blessed me. Uh, so I will not go to church. Listen. One of the things ambayo inatumariza, inamariza watu, ni kwamba, we have made the love of God monetary. That for me to love you, God, I have to be paid first. Am I talking to anybody? Is my preaching very harsh today? There is something within us that we need to change. Both the preachers and those who are being preached to. That we learn to serve the Lord because he is our God. Because he is our father. We have a relationship with him. We are not coming to him because we want to be rich. We are coming to him because he loves us and we love him. We are not coming to him. Let me tell you, we need to get to the point where we say, Father, you heal me or you don't heal me, I will worship you. Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we know that our Father, our God is able to deliver us from the fire if you put us there. But even if he does not, we will not bow to the hindos. Those are the people who are in the spirit of sonship. They are the spirit of sonship. They never thought about sale fast. They never thought about gaining fast. 
And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that everybody who is here and who will hear this message, that the Lord will help you. You will develop a spirit of sonship and you will say, God, I am a son. I want to suffer an inheritance. Now, let me show you something. When the father, the son came back and the father embraced him and received him because he was a son and uh, he threw a party for him. The younger son was in the field serving. He was serving the father. Because a son always serves the father. Even in this church, I can be able to know who is a, when a person becomes a son. The host always want to assist the pastor, want to support the pastor, want to pray for the pastor, want to support the pastor. Because they have the spirit of sonship. To them, he is not just a preacher, he is their father. And that is, a, some, that is something special to develop. That is something special to develop. Am I talking to anybody? I pray that you become a son. May you become a son. Praise the name of the living God. May you serve God as a son. Whether he heals you or he does not heal you. Whether he left you or he does not lift you. We know that Yeshua will lift you. We know that Yeshua will bless you. We know that Yeshua will open your doors. But may that not become a condition for you to serve him. Am I talking to anybody? May that not become a condition to serve him. Even if he does not give you shoes, serve him without shoes. If he does not give you fear, if it's practical walk to church, and say, Lord, I am a son. Now, the younger, the younger, the older brother, akaskia makelele nyumbani na kauliza, what is happening at home? Na kambiwa, your brother who left has come back and therefore your father ame muchinjia na ame mutengenezea pati and the son felt bad. Go to 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Now his Honda son was in the field, verse 25, and he came and drew near to the house. He had music and dancing, verse number 26. So he called one of the servants and asked, what these things meant? And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fattened son, the fattened calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came and pleaded with him, mm -hmm, 29, so he answered and said to his father, Lord, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. I want you to look at this. This is where again many times we fail. We feel I have been serving and you have not done anything for me. I have been giving, you have not blessed me. I have been praying you have not done this for me. Again, the mindset of a servant was almost cutting up with him. He is complaining because another amefanyiwa kitu. Then the father said in verse number 30, but as soon as this son of you has came, who has devoured your livelihood with harrods, you killed the fattened calf to him, Verse that one. And he said to him, son, you are always with me. And all that I have is you. As I want you to look at that verse because that, uh, that will be my, maybe that's where I'll stop. You are always with me. And all that which I have is yours. That one is ministering to my heart even now. You have always been with me. And all that I have is yours. I want you to know that God has so much for you and for me. God has so much for us. This one that Jesus was giving this story, this parable, he was actually illustrating the children of God. There are some who serve with the mentality of a servant. But there are others who remain to be son. 
And he is saying, if you are a son, all that which belongs to the father, it belongs to you. I want you to have this mindset in you. You may have nothing but the father has everything for you. There is a time that is coming at your inheritance, your share. By and by, bit and bit, um, start being handed over to you. Don't complain of the many times you have served the Lord and you're not seeing anything. Don't complain of the many times you have walked with the God and you have not seen a reward. Our God is a rewarding God. Hebrew chapter number 11 verse number, verse number 6. The Bible says, those who come to God without faith, it is impossible to praise God. Without faith, it is impossible to praise him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. That he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The one diligent means having or showing care and consciousness in one's work or duties. Having or showing care and consciousness in, in one's work or duties. When you're diligent, you are careful how you do what you do. You do it with all of your heart. You do it with all of yourself. Sons don't deserve themselves. Sons want to protect that which belongs to the father. Even in a church like this, a son wants to protect what belongs to the father. But the moment the mindset of a, of a, of a, of a servant gets it to you, you feel you want your share and go. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the spirit of sonship will remain in us no matter what. We will build this together. We will serve God together. We will walk the journey together. We will glorify the Lord together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be upon you, will be upon me, will be upon us. You will not get tired to sacrifice anything. For I normally say, whatever goes to God is not a loss. Anytime you release your time, your money, your energy to God, you have not gone to a loss. Because God is a rewarder. He wants everybody that serves him diligently. He is a father that he wants the sons. He is a father that takes care of the sons. He has an inheritance for you. Allow me to quote this scripture as I finish. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9 is a scripture we know. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9. Do not be tired of doing good. For at the appointed time, you will be lifted up if you don't give up, if you don't lose heart. Sometimes as a human being, you may feel like you are tired. You may feel like you want to lose heart. You may feel like it's been too long, but don't be tired. Renew your strength. Renew your strength. As a son, renew your strength. Isaiah Chapter number, chapter number 40, verse number 29. Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 29. Let's go back to, let's go there together. As we wind up, Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 10. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might increases their strength. I pray today, may the Lord give you power. May the Lord increase your strength. We are as a son, you feel like you have grown weary. May the Lord renew your strength. Bible says in verse number 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the youth men shall utterly fall. Verse number 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. May your strength be renewed. Some trust in chariots. Others in the horses, but our hope, our trust will be in the Lord our God. I want to tell you the truth. God will not fail you. The Lord knows you by name. He calls you by name. He has your inheritance. 
as you serve. Serve as a son. Don't serve as a servant. Don't serve for a pay. Whether it has come or it has not come, for sure, let me tell you, for sure God will pay you back. Because God never uses anything for free. God pays for anything he uses. But don't serve for payment. Serve because you are a son. You may imagine he is delaying. He will surely come. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. I want you to just open up your hands before the Lord. And tell God, Lord help me to have you as a son. Just open your hearts before the Lord.